Is it okay to ask signs from God? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. trabaho ako sa, as nurse sa Chinese din. Namatay yung dad ko. Mm-hmm. Siya mismo, optometrist. So may clinic kami, so wala kaming doctor. So tinutulungan lang kami ng auntie ko na also an optometrist. So napapabayaan yung practice namin. So mm-hmm. the family decided that I take up optometry. Okay. Tapos all the while, lumalaki na rin yung faith ko. No? From hindi kami nagdadasal. Ngayon, Sunday, nagdadasal na kami. Hanggang sa magbo-board exams. Mm-hmm. Sabi ko kay Lord, Lord, parang meron akong calling sa pagpapari ah. Pero hindi ko sure. Kasi hindi, walang nagpapari sa amin. Hindi kami galing sa religious, religious, or religious or family. family or kahit sa studies. Walang ganun. Pero feel ko may tawag. So I need a sign. So pumunta ako sa simbahan before the blessed sacrament. Sabi ko, Lord, Magbo-board exam, I need the sign. Kung gusto mo akong magpare, gawin mo akong top sa board exams. Ayoko ng top 10. Ayoko ng top 5. Ayoko ng top 3. Gusto ko top 1. Magpapare ako. Ay, amazing. Nangyari kasi no na delay yung board exams kasi dapat merong five board examiners. Mm. Ang problema, walang quorum. So, na-delayed siya. Siyempre, hindi ka naman lagi nag-aaral. So, ako hindi na rin ako nag-aaral. Mm-hmm. Tapos, nung in-announce na natutuloy yung board exam, sabi ko, mukhang babagsak ako. Ha? Kasi napabayaan ko na yung pag-aaral. So, I went back to the Blessed Sacrament at dinasal ko uli yun. Help me prepare to pass the board exams. Pero may calling, Lord. Pero hindi ko sure. So, I repeated the same prayer. Kung gusto niyo po ako magpare, make me top the board exams. So, review, review. The board exams came. Three days written, one day practical before the doctors. Gagawin mo yun with your patient. After nun, feel ko, bagsak ako sa, <laughs> sa, sa board exams kasi ang hirap. Oh. No? Tapos, ayun. So, after several months, may tumatawag na sa phone ko. It was my dean ng college congratulating me kasi top one ako sa board exam. Amazing. Amen. Grabe naman yun. Ito yung binigay ng Professional Regulation Commission nung mag-top one ako sa board exams. Pero merong mas importante pa dyan kesa dun sa top one na medal na yon. Ito yun, no? Bossing, meron ka rin ito, di ba? <laughs> Tayong mga Dominican trained, Siyempre. binibigyan tayo nito. Mas maganda to, mas importante to. B- binanggit ni Kuya Jose kanina, kaka-birthday lang ni Mother Mary nung sure. September 8th. So let us pray the rosary para matapos na rin tong pandemic na to. Ay, mga nasisiraan ng loob, yes. nawalan ng trabaho. No, let us pray daily the rosary kasama ng ating mga family. In today's gospel reading, the Pharisees are asking Jesus for signs if they were to believe that He is the Messiah they have been waiting for. Yesterday, we saw Jesus feeding 4,000 people with seven loaves and a few fish. Previously, He healed multitudes and yet, the Pharisees demanded more signs. To a stubborn person whose perspectives have been set, no amount of proving would convince them. We are often like those Pharisees. We want signs, but we do not prepare our hearts to believe and accept. When we are faced with a situation that requires making an important decision in our life, be it choosing a college course, a job at home or abroad, a person to court or be one steady date and maybe eventual lifelong partner, an investment, a business to shut down, a locality to live in, and many more, we can follow the discernment process that St. Ignatius of Loyola recommends, which includes asking for signs. In his spiritual exercises, he offers us a path to discerning the will of God. We must first have the seven attitudes to authentic discernment, openness, generosity, courage, interior freedom, a habit of prayerful reflection, 
the right priorities, not confusing the end with the means. When making an important decision, we may find ourselves, according to him, in one of three basic situations. First, there is a feeling of certainty in us. Or second, there is an inner conflict like what the video showed. Third, we feel clueless. If we find ourselves in number two or number three, St. Ignatius offers us these discernment techniques. First, decide what decision you want to make. Second, pray for the grace to not lean on either choice, but to stay in the middle. Third, pray for God to enlighten and move you to seek what is most conducive to God's service and praise. Fourth, imagine a person you never met who seeks your help to make a decision in the same situation you are in. Observe what advice you give this person. This follows the logic that we are better at giving others advice than figuring out what we should do ourselves. Fifth, imagine that you are on your deathbed or facing Jesus the judge. What do you think would he feel about the decision you made? If you are happy with the decision and God is happy, you made the right choice. Sixth, if there is no clarity in your decision making, use reason and weigh each option carefully, listing the advantages and disadvantages, the reasons for or against, the pros and cons of each. The significant items will emerge, making it easier to make the decision. Seventh, once you have made the decision, Go to God and beg for signs of God's confirmation that your decision will result in following His will and glorifying Him in the process. Examine your motivations for wanting a sign. Reflect too on the disposition of your heart as you make your decision. If you are at peace with your decision, if you sense God's presence in the process, if there is no tinge whatsoever of anxiety, sadness, and heaviness, then follow your decision without regret. God's plan is on the road to fulfillment in your life. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, may all my decisions glorify you. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.